Hello, good evening, everyone. Hope you all are staying safe and having a great weekend. I warmly welcome you all to Illusio, Adventure into a World of Imagination, organized by the IEEE Industry Application Society Student Branch Chapter of Sri Lanka Technological Campus. I am Manal Rajapaksha, and I'll be the moderator for today's session. First of all, I thank each and every one of you for being here even virtually amidst the current pandemic situation in the country and all other uncertainties happening these days. I would also especially welcome all participants joining with us today from overseas. So today's session is about VR, virtual reality, AR, augmented reality, and MR, mixed reality. These topics might be new to most of you, but don't worry you all will get a good knowledge about them at the end of today's session. And most importantly, remember, these are eminent in medical field, biosystems, mechatronics, electronics, and civil engineering fields, business and marketing, game development, and IT industries. So to talk about them, we have invited an expert in this field, is a lecturer at Department of Information Technology, Faculty of Information Technology at University of Mordor. He is a senior developer and consultant in XR and digital game development. He holds the Bachelor of Science Honors degree in Software Engineering from University of Kalania, specialized in digital game development. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Engineer Upulanga Premasiri. Good evening, sir. Right. Good evening, Manula, and uh, good evening all. So uh, thank you for your kind introduction, Manula. Yes, uh, today uh, we are going so, to... Uh, yes, sir. so before moving on, I have some special announcements to our participants. Uh, first one is, uh, if you have any questions regarding today's session, please feel free to type them in any language you are comfortable with and drop them in the chat box to one of our co-hosts. Uh, we will answer them in the Q&A session at the end. And the second one is, uh, since we are issuing a valuable digital certificate to all the participants, our organizing committee will send you a link in the chat box for a Google form. Uh, in that, uh, please fill your personal details, name and email address correctly uh, to avoid any kind of confusions. Uh, so with that being said, without wasting much time, I will hand over the session to our guest speaker. Uh, so over to you, sir. Right, thank you, Manuja. So yes, uh, thank you for the kind introduction, Manula. Uh, so uh, today we are going to talk about virtual, not only virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. Uh, and uh, yes, before going through these technologies, uh, we need to identify what is the reality and uh, what is the virtual world. So uh, first of all. Uh, I'm going to uh, turn off my camera, then uh, it will save uh, the bandwidth and data for you guys. So, uh, yes, in this uh, small two uh, pictures, you guys can see a game and uh, the actual world. So uh, in the virtual world, you have no real identity or physical interaction, but uh, in the real world, you have uh, the 
real identity and physical interaction with other objects so uh, by using xr also known as uh, virtual reality mixed reality and augmented reality uh, the combination of these uh, three technologies we can interact with actual objects and we can combine virtual worlds so uh, before going through these technologies uh, it is very essential to identify the virtual world and the real world so uh, at the very beginning uh, you guys uh, i think you guys uh, can observe uh, so uh, in my background there's a virtual backdrop right and uh, also i am in the physical environment so nowadays we can mix these uh, two components together we can mix the real world and also we can mix the physical uh, we can mix the virtual environment so uh, traditional ways of uh, accessing these uh, two environments or traditional ways of accessing the virtual world uh, we can use monitors uh, we can use uh, televisions and mobile devices and also projectors and uh, cinema so there are various ways of uh, accessing the virtual world at the moment and uh, but uh, advancements of these technologies uh, they are uh, much more complex and uh, interactive hardware devices that we can use to engage with virtual world and also uh, being in the real world so today we are going to discuss about uh, what are these hardware devices and uh, how we are going to use these devices in different type of industries and uh, how we are going to uh, what are the technological requirements to develop these uh, software applications for virtual reality and augmented reality and uh, mixed reality and also uh, what are the benefits uh, to the world and the society and uh, how we are going to implement these applications related to our industries uh, these applications especially uh, these xr applications xr means uh, the combination of uh, vr ar and mr so uh, there are a lot of applications and there are a lot of areas industries that uh, we can apply or we can uh, get the support from these applications not only it or not only totally computer engineering uh, we can use these applications uh, in various industries so uh, in the future slides uh, you will learn uh, you will get the idea how to use these applications uh, so uh, we can uh, we can increase the efficiency and also uh, we can increase the productivity and also we can connect with many people uh, and uh, we can experience the virtual world uh, being inside in that environment so uh, these are the Uh, main components that we are going to talk about uh, during uh, this session so uh, i hope uh, this session will be a really interesting one for you guys so uh, the first uh, the first component vr also known as virtual reality so we, uh, first we are going to uh, learn or we are going to uh, get the idea uh, of this uh, virtual reality technology so i'm going to play a small uh, video i think you guys can observe uh, these people are using different type of hardware devices rather than uh, traditional mobile phones uh, traditional laptops or uh, traditional computers they are using different type of hardware devices video uh, you guys can see uh, they have a special type of head mounted device right uh, 
so uh, uh, keep eye on uh, that devices in here you guys can see another special component uh, they are in physically they are in the real world uh, but they cannot see the real world uh, actually they are in the virtual world I love it when these VR games do that. And uh, in here, the, uh, this uh, person, he is using a different kind of device. Traditionally, uh, we use keyboard, mouse, and uh, joysticks to play games, right? Uh, but you guys can see this person is living inside the game. So virtual reality is not only for gaming and military and uh, those stuff. We can create, we can develop applications for other industries as well. So this is the uh, training simulator for the PCR test. Right. Okay. So uh, I think uh, you got the uh, better idea uh, through those small clips. Uh, so virtual reality, also known as VR, creates a complete 360 degree experience by using a separate head mounted device such as HTC Vive. So virtual reality is something like this. Uh, we are still in the physical environment, but we cannot see the things around us. Uh, we need to wear a special head-mounted device, uh, also uh, known as a HMD. Uh, we need to wear a, a special computer. And uh, through that computer, uh, we can see a complete 360-degree virtual world. Uh, that means uh, the actual world 
will be replaced by a virtual world through this device. So this is the basic, uh, the behind the scene of virtual reality, or this is the basic working principle of virtual reality. And uh, to develop these applications and uh, to interact or to get the uh, functionality of these applications, we need special kind of devices. Uh, and uh, before going through those uh, devices, I would uh, like to uh, introduce uh, you to the very first idea of this virtual reality. So uh, in uh, 1935, a science fiction author, W. Stanley, uh, wrote a small cartoon or a uh, small uh, article about, uh, about something uh, futuristic. Uh, so uh, this idea, uh, Pygmalion's uh, spectacles. This idea uh, was the uh, very first initialization for virtual reality. So uh, nowadays uh, we have very uh, advanced HMDs, hardware devices, uh, computers. So we can uh, play with these uh, VR applications. Uh, we can uh, engage with this uh, virtual world. So, but this, uh, this was the first idea. Uh, this was the first step towards virtual reality. Uh, and uh, you guys uh, need to think uh, in a very creative manner. So uh, in the future, you guys can create something better than this, something uh, very innovative and uh, very uh, something uh, new. So uh, like uh, this uh, Stanley's idea, now uh, this is a reality, so we can engage with virtual world using small HMDs. So now we are going to talk about latest technologies. Uh, yeah. first, uh, or also uh, known as the most uh, famous H, uh, HMD, the head mounted device, uh, the HTC Vive, a uh, headset by HTC Corporation. So, uh, we need to wear this head mounted device or the head mounted display HMD uh, to engage with VR applications. So, uh, in here, you guys can see uh, this is the display unit and the speakers and it has uh, a few cameras So uh, this device, HTC Vive, uh, it's by HTC Corporation and a little bit expensive device. Uh, it has a few versions, wired and wireless. Uh, and uh, by using this device, we can engage with virtual reality and its applications. So uh, this is the basic working principle of uh, HTC Vive. Uh, in here, uh, so in this small picture, okay, uh, right. In this picture, you guys can see five components. Uh, we have uh, two cubes. Uh, these cubes are known as base stations. Uh, these are the sensors uh, that we use to track the uh, controller's position and also uh, the head uh, mounted display, uh, these uh, goggles position. So uh, we can uh, track these uh, three positions and then we can generate the avatar inside the virtual world. Uh, that means uh, inside the virtual world, uh, 
uh, we need to create uh, the height of the person or the player and also we need to get the hand positions of the person so uh, by using these uh, two controllers uh, these are also very similar uh, to uh, play, uh, playstation or xbox controllers they have very similar functionality uh, there are trigger buttons and also uh, the touchpad and uh, there are uh, many more functionalities uh, and uh, we can engage with uh, the virtual world by using these two controllers uh, but uh, to get the controller positions and also to get the head, uh, headsets position we need uh, these two cube like devices also known as uh, base stations so uh, in the other picture uh, you guys can see Uh, how uh, the player uh, going to interact with the device. Uh, so uh, at the very beginning, uh, we need to configure the play area. Uh, we need to uh, select an area in our living room or in our working uh, rooms or anywhere. And uh, then the base stations will identify uh, the obstacles and the player and the, uh, these uh, three components, the headset and to controllers. So uh, this is the basic working principle of HTC Vive. So if you are going to uh, interact or if you are going to uh, develop applications for HTC Vive, then uh, you need to select a very good area and also you need to select a few power supplies because you need to plug these uh, base stations to get the player's position. Right. <laughs> Very advanced device. Uh, this is the Oculus Quest by Facebook. So you're curious about VR, but you don't know where to and, start. And uh, well, uh, you've come to the right place. So in here, you guys uh, can see there are only two controllers and the headset. Uh, yes, uh, this is a little bit advanced uh, than the Oculus because uh, in Facebook's Oculus Quest. We no need uh, external sensors or external base stations. Uh, inside this headset, it has uh, four cameras. And also uh, by using these four cameras, uh, we can track the person's hand. Uh, so uh, the technology is a little bit different uh, than the HTC Vive, but uh, also uh, there are very uh, advanced features inside this Oculus Quest. Uh, we can uh, use the controllers or else uh, we can use our bare hands. That means uh, sometimes uh, to interact uh, with other applications, we no need to use the controllers. It can track the actual human hand. So uh, this is the uh, best thing about Oculus Quest. And uh, there's a little uh, drawback uh, because uh, this device is use uh, this device is using Android operating system. Uh, therefore, uh, there are a few limitations uh, with this device and uh, with the development technologies. Uh, previously, HTC Vive we can plug HTC Vive into a computer uh, with a higher uh, GPU power, and we can create. Uh, triple A quality virtual applications. Uh, this device is also capable of uh, developing such applications, but there are a few limitations during to the operating system at, and its constraints. device, uh, this is uh, Facebook's Oculus Go. Actually, uh, now uh, they are not, uh, uh, this is a little bit outdated device. Uh, this is uh, cheaper than the Oculus Quest and uh, the features are a uh, little bit uh, 
lower than the Oculus Quest. It has only one uh, controller and uh, there's no any hand tracking technology inside this Oculus Go headset. So uh, this is another uh, uh, head mounted device or HMD that we can use to engage with VR applications. And uh, the PlayStation VR uh, by Sony. So, uh, I think uh, you all are familiar with PlayStation and uh, the gaming platform, right? So, uh, Sony, they have their own uh, virtual reality platform. Uh, also known as the PlayStation VR. Uh, and uh, with this uh, device, uh, there are two controllers and uh, we can create and we can engage with, especially with uh, gaming applications by using PlayStation VR. Uh, but uh, to engage uh, with uh, these uh, virtual reality applications, uh, you need PlayStation as well, because uh, you need to plug this uh, PlayStation uh, VR uh, to a PlayStation uh, 4 or PlayStation 5, then you can engage with applications. Previously, uh, for the Oculus uh, Quest and the Oculus Go, uh, you no need any other external device. Uh, they have uh, display and also they have the uh, other computational hardware. So uh, there's no any external device. Uh, but uh, for this uh, Sony's uh, PlayStation VR, you need the PS. And uh, for the HTC Vive, uh, you need a good uh, computer uh, with VR ready GPU power uh, to try these applications. Okay, uh, so uh, this is uh, another device, uh, but uh, also outdated, uh, the Gear VR by Samsung. Uh, the drawback or the limitation of this device is uh, you need a Samsung mobile uh, phone or a Samsung S series or Note series one to engage with VR application because uh, this device, it doesn't uh, have a display and uh, certain sensors uh, to execute VR applications and uh, it has only one controller and uh, you need a Samsung device to try this head mounted display. Right, so uh, uh, yeah, this uh, Samsung uh, Gear VR, it requires a Samsung smartphone. Uh, these are the models uh, which are compatible with the Samsung uh, Gear VR. Uh, and uh, you need to plug your mobile phone into this HMD. So uh, then uh, with the collaboration of uh, this HMD and your Samsung mobile phone, it can generate the virtual world. So uh, these are the limitations of uh, this uh, Gear VR, uh, but uh, this device is uh, cheaper than the other devices. Then uh, we have the uh, most uh, common one, the most uh, famous one, the Google Cardboard VR. And uh, this is the most uh, cheapest uh, VR headset uh, in Sri Lanka. Uh, you guys uh, can uh, get this device for very small price. Uh, and uh, you will require a smartphone with, uh, the, uh, with the gyroscope sensor. So uh, this gyroscope sensor, it's a special uh, sensor uh, to, uh, to get the rotation. Wait, uh, okay, so uh, like in this picture, uh, to get the ro uh, rotation uh, between uh, these uh, three axes, uh, 
uh, the X, Y, and the Z, uh, you need a gyroscope sensor. So uh, to try virtual reality applications uh, by using Google Cardboard VR, you need a smart device uh, with the gyroscope sensor. Uh, so uh, the, the, uh, the difference between uh, this uh, Google Cardboard VR and the uh, Samsung's Gear VR is uh, for Samsung's Gear VR, uh, you need a Samsung device, uh, but uh, for this uh, Google Cardboard VR, uh, you can uh, try this uh, VR box with any device, but uh, you need, uh, but uh, that device should have gyroscope sensor. So uh, in this, uh, small image in the left side. Uh, this, is, uh, this is also very uh, same to Google Cardboard VR uh, by another uh, industry or another company, but uh, you need a mobile phone with the gyroscope sensor. Uh, it, uh, it has the plastic cover, uh, but uh, in Google Cardboard VR, uh, it has very cheap cardboard layout around the VR box. Right, so uh, now we are going to uh, talk about the technology behind these uh, VR head mounted devices. Uh, so uh, in the left side, uh, you guys can see, uh, we can track uh, the, uh, the player's height and also uh, the uh, the displays position and uh, these uh, controllers position with sensors. So uh, this uh, technology is uh, known as sensor based tracking. And uh, in the right side, uh, you guys can see uh, we can track uh, the player's height and also uh, the obstacles uh, around the player and also the hand position of the player by using the cameras around the VR box. So uh, by using image processing uh, and machine learning, we can uh, track the player's height and hand. So uh, these are the main uh, two technologies uh, that we are using in uh, VR application development uh, to track uh, the player's height because uh, when we are developing applications or when we are engaging with uh, VR applications, uh, we need to match the uh, player's actual height with the uh, vi uh, virtual world's avatar's height. And also uh, we need to match the positions of uh, player's hand or player's controllers uh, inside uh, the, uh, the virtual world, virtual controllers. So uh, to do these things, uh, we are using these two tracking technologies and uh, then we can create fully immersive VR application. Uh, so guys, if you have any question, any issue, uh, you guys can use the chatting channel. And uh, at the end, we are going to uh, give solutions and we are going to discuss uh, the issues that you are having. Hard hat zone. Right. Now uh, we are going to discuss about industries that uh, we can apply virtual reality. Uh, first, the engineering and construction. So uh, at the very beginning, uh, we mentioned that uh, VR is not only for computer, IT, and uh, these uh, industries and gaming and these stuff, right? We can create, we can apply this uh, virtual reality uh, and uh, we can uh, develop VR applications for other industries as well. So in this small video, you guys can see uh, this uh, company, uh, they are creating uh, virtual uh, app, uh, worlds uh, or virtual construction sites. So uh, the users or the clients, uh, they can uh, engage or they can observe the final uh, finishing of the construction site.
gave me a whole new perspective on what the nice children of the ancients. Without goggles, all we see is dirt and steel beams. Through the virtual reality lens, this is the entrance to Two Small Pies, home of the Firebird. Inside the framework, construction workers are still hammering away, building... Right. And, uh... Another area of... McLaren is all about using cutting-edge technology alongside craftsmanship. Those two values are the absolute key to what we do in the design studio. So I introduced uh, VR into the business about a couple of years. Uh, this uh, video is from uh, McLaren, a world-famous uh, motor car company. So you guys can see they are using virtual reality to design uh, better motor vehicles. To go now. But the real missing link for us was a design tool. It's something that didn't exist and it's something that I could see a real opportunity for. So one of the key features of the tool was to be able to import engineering hard points. Millimeters do matter and it's all about contributing to that perfect proportion of a volume model. You could literally then bring in an engine, bring in radiator positions, vision lines and so on, and you could then start to sketch over the top of it. The McLaren design team that came to us with this, this problem to solve. How do we get the idea into 3D quickest from the designer's mind? What we've managed to achieve with Vector Suite is you've got 2D happening. So, at the uh, rather than using a traditional display or traditional papers, uh, they can uh, see uh, or they can engage with the actual uh, uh, scales and uh, they can uh, observe the actual finishing of the motor vehicle with VR. happening at the same time as 3D. We can pop back and forth within the application to 2D to make a center line that's perfectly accurate, but then we can also pop back into 3D and sketch freely, turning that process, which was traditionally quite drawn out, into something much more concise. As a designer, you are thinking, how does it translate? But now, because we've accelerated that process, you're sketching straight into 3D, so it's much quicker, far more efficient. It still takes the craftsmanship of the drawn line, you can capture that, that subtlety of line, but then you can tweak it and perfect it and really tune that volume because for us, proportion is king. This tool is giving us the ability to design cars in VR, so it was properly game-changing for us. When you take a step back and see what a designer can do with a tool like this, it really feels like we're on the cusp of something truly significant for the future of 3D design, which is really exciting. Right, and uh, another area that uh, we can uh, develop or we can use VR applications, the healthcare. The University of Basel, we developed this virtual reality room. What is unique about this virtual reality room is that for the first time, we provide volume rendered images in real time. Which so um, nowadays, we are using applications uh, or platforms such as Zoom and uh, Teams. Uh, so uh, what if we can uh, use VR application uh, to uh, create immersive environment uh, of a classroom? So I think uh, it will be really awesome, right? As an additional option, we also gave them a cutting plane. This cutting plane can be used to either cut through the volumetric data set uh, to, for example, cut open the skull or the rib cage for a better view. Of so the in healthcare, we can, can use uh, these type of VR applications so to educate can be freely students and, uh, and visualize we can uh, create 3D images or 3D models of uh, certain body parts in uh, doctors can uh, identify the disease or they can make the decision. So uh, 
shadows. This is another area that we can apply VR. And uh, education. So uh, we can use uh, VR for education, and uh, there are a lot of applications uh, available. Uh, and uh, then uh, we can create interactive classrooms for students using VR. And I'm Darren Nepsey, I'm creator and executive producer on Star Domains. VR is not only for technical uh, domains. Uh, there are a lot of uh, VR applications for arts and entertainment. So uh, this person, uh, she is an artist, uh, but uh, she is using virtual reality to create virtual arts uh, rather than uh, using traditional uh, papers or traditional softwares. Uh, she is using uh, VR to create virtual arts. Versus the forces of evil, and then this piece came about. Um, I discovered there was a new tool, a sphere tool, um, where you can actually like make a circle, and it looked like there was a square and some other stuff in space, and kind of make it bigger or or smaller. I like lots of eyes. I'm always like more eyes and more nipples for just about everything. So that's kind of <laughs> tends to be a thing I do. So then from there. Then I built the grass around and all those things. Um, but really the idea just came from the fact that I found this sphere tool and I wanted to see where I could take that. Kind of a little funky with the eyes and stuff, but it was kind of a fun thing to play around with and, and kind of figure out. I feel like I've definitely always been drawn to cartoons and bright colors and all that type of thing. So I feel like I've maybe always been in that zone. So I used that as the head and then you can actually paint on top of that with the oil brush. I really love the fact that you can really just paint over your head and walk through it and go around. So there's an application that's known as Peel Brush. We can use this application to create amazing art like this. And uh, entertainment and uh, media. Uh, there are uh, VR movies and uh, VR games. Uh, they are very popular. Uh, so uh, this is another domain, another industry that uh, we can uh, apply virtual reality. And also military. Uh, so in the previous video, at the very beginning, you guys uh, saw uh, now um, military services, they are using virtual reality to train soldiers so uh, there are a lot of benefits, uh, like uh, they can serve uh, MO and they can create uh, many virtual uh, environments, uh, many hostile situations, uh, and they can customize the training uh, situation. Right, okay, so now we are going to move towards the next biggest area, the augmented reality. from so, uh, in here uh, you guys can see the real world and also the virtual objects like this dragon at the same time, but uh, in previous videos and uh, previous examples about virtual reality, uh, we uh, could not see the real world through the virtual world. But in here, we can see the both.
this is my idea game and uh, the law you see and And uh, I mentioned earlier, AR, VR, XR, these are not only for technical domains. So uh, this is a very innovative application designed for passion. So if you love fashion designing and uh, these type of uh, domains and industries, okay, there are solutions for you. AR applications, uh, we no need any other external hardware devices like HTC Vive or Oculus Quest. We can use our mobile phone or our tablet. So, uh, and uh, the only hardware component or the sensor is the camera that we are using. The display. So you guys can see this uh, child is using the other application. Another AR application for education and healthcare. Right, so augmented reality, a combination of real world scene and virtually generated scene by a computer. So this is the basic definition for AR, augmented reality. Uh, we no need the head-mounted device uh, for augmented reality. Uh, we can see the actual world and uh, computer generated uh, stuff like 3D models and uh, VFX and other uh, text and other things to a display when we are using augmented reality. So uh, augmented reality uh, is a little bit advanced uh, than the VR and there are some uh, limitations uh, with AR. Uh, so now we are going to talk about the technology behind AR and uh, the industries uh, that we can apply this technology uh, to uh, create much more efficiency and a productive manner uh, in our day-to-day -day life. Right, so uh, the hardware devices for AR, any Android or iOS smartphone or tablets, and uh, also a computer with the webcam. So we can use uh, any computer or a laptop with the webcam to generate and uh, to experience these uh, v uh, AR applications. 
right uh, and uh, the flow of work uh, so uh, this is the basic uh, working uh, flow or the uh, working principle the steps of augmented reality first we need to get and analyze environment information also known as tracking because uh, we need to play 3d objects or visual effects in the real environment then we need to identify uh, the places or the coordinates where we are going to put these 3d models or the uh, effects then we need to execute the program that means uh, we need to execute the logic uh, and uh, final uh, we can render the 3d virtual stuff in the real environment so uh, this is the basic working principle of augmented reality three uh, phases first we need to identify uh, the environment or the uh, coordinates uh, or the place where we are going to display or where we are going to put our 3d stuff or the virtual stuff then we need to execute the logic execute the code execute the program then we need to render or then we need to display those uh, 3d or the virtual stuff right uh, and uh, there are a few tracking uh, technologies uh, there are a few uh, tracking uh, faces so uh, in here you guys can see the display and the camera and also a qr code so uh, this technology is also known as marker based tracking uh, marker based uh, tracking means uh, uh, as developers or else uh, users we need to put a marker uh, then uh, this application will identify this marker and put the 3d model on that marker so uh, in this picture you guys can see uh, in uh, in the actual world uh, there's only uh, the qr code but uh, through the display you guys can see a chair on that qr code so this is known as marker based tracking or uh, image processing based uh, tracking this is very popular tracking mechanism in ar and uh, then uh, we have a uh, few other tracking technologies uh, the surface recognition so uh, in this picture in here uh, you guys can see uh, this person is going to place this chair on the floor so uh, we can track horizontal and vertical planes or uh, surfaces uh, by uh, using uh, the algorithm uh, that or the sdk that we are using to develop uh, the application so uh, this is another tracking technology that we are using in our industry then we have the gps based tracking so uh, i think uh, you all are familiar with uh, with this application uh, also known as uh, the pokemon go a game uh, so uh, in this game uh, they are using uh, gps and uh, gps locations to put uh, these uh, 3d uh, models uh, so uh, right uh, 3d models uh, and uh, they are placing these uh, 3d models on these uh, gps locations uh, and uh, for this uh, type of tracking mechanisms uh, there is no need a marker or a qr code or some pattern like that uh, then uh, these uh, tracking technologies are known as markerless tracking technologies then another a very advanced tracking uh, technology also known as uh, the scene recognition uh by uh, using re uh, scene recognition uh, we can train applications to recognize certain places for an example uh, the front gate of your university or else uh, a popular place uh, the independence square or else uh, the liberty statue 
or else uh, another uh, bus station or a train station or something like that. Uh, we can train uh, the application to identify such environments and then we can place uh, these uh, virtual objects, 3D models and uh, virtual effects on these environments. Uh, so uh, this technology is uh, known as uh, markerless tracking and scene recognition. And uh, then uh, we have a few other tracking te technologies. Uh, the 3D object uh, tracking, uh, you guys can see uh, in this uh, application, uh, we can uh, track this uh, toy car and we can replace this uh, toy car with uh, some sport car 3D model. And uh, the face tracking, uh, widely used in many filters, uh, Facebook, uh, Snapchat and other uh, applications filters, uh, they are widely using this technology uh, to generate uh, funny faces. And uh, in uh, motion tracking, uh, we can track certain motions of the user and we can place uh, virtual effects around the user. So these are the basic tracking technologies uh, that we are using in AR application development. And uh, these are the uh, industrial applications or domains that we can use of modern reality, education and training. Uh, like in that video, we can create interactive uh, textbooks. Uh, we can create uh, live textbooks uh, by using AR uh, applications and AR technology. And uh, then uh, we can uh, uh, bring these uh, 2D plans into 3D uh, by using AR. So uh, we can apply this uh, technology uh, into engineering, construction or architecture domain. Uh, so uh, there are many uses uh, with AR into this domain as well. And uh, manufacturing, uh, this is another area that uh, developers uh, develop AR applications uh, so we can train uh, new users or else uh, we can give information uh, remotely to the users uh, using uh, these type of manufacturing AR applications uh, or else uh, we can train uh, new uh, employees uh, uh, by using AR applications. So uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, case uh, cases and a lot of uh, scenarios that we can apply AR in manufacturing as well. Try Suzanne Harwood dresses and gowns. Uh, we can apply AR technology or AR concepts into fashion. Uh, so uh, this is uh, this AR is not only for high technical domains or uh, engineering, uh, computer science, computer engineering, IT. Uh, you can uh, apply AR into any domain uh, and uh, you need to be uh, creative, you, you need to think uh, in a different way, but uh, uh, you need to familiar with the technologies as well. Right, and uh, transportation and uh, navigation. Uh, nowadays, uh, many motor vehicles, uh, they have such uh, systems uh, like this. Uh, we can uh, see the uh, locations uh, and uh, we can uh, see the navigation details uh, through the uh, windshield or else uh, through a small uh, screen. Uh, and uh, likewise, Yes, uh, we can apply augmented reality into transportation as well. And uh, entertainment, uh, like in the Pokemon Go game, there are a lot of uh, AR games uh, that uh, you can try. Uh, sometimes uh, these games are not available uh, for Sri Lankans uh, because uh, the limitations uh, in our country, but uh, there are a lot of games uh, available. Uh, in AR. Right, uh, okay, so uh, now uh, we are going to discuss the uh, difference between uh, AR and VR before moving towards the 
MR, the mixed reality. So uh, in virtual reality, the user is uh, uh, is in a virtual environment, and in augmented reality, user is in the physical environment. Uh, actually, uh, both of the times, the, the user is in the physical environment, the real environment. Uh, but uh, in VR, user can uh, only see the uh, virtual environment, uh, but uh, in AR, user can see both. Uh, actual real environment as well as the computer generated components such as uh, 3d models and other effects so uh, this is the main difference between uh, ar and vr so now we are going to uh, talk about uh, the next big concept uh, the mr or mixed reality Right, uh, mixed reality. Uh, mixed reality is the merge of uh, real and virtual worlds uh, to produce uh, new environments and visualizations uh, where physical and uh, digital objects coexist and interact in real time. So uh, this is uh, very uh, similar to AR, but uh, advanced uh, than AR because uh, in mixed reality, uh, we can create or we can develop uh, 360 uh, AR and VR, uh, sorry, 360 uh, real and uh, virtual combined environment around the user. Uh, previously, uh, in AR, uh, we used uh, our mobile phone or a tablet to engage with uh, these uh, components or uh, to see the components, but uh, in uh, MR, we need see through glasses. Uh, like uh, this person is wearing, we need uh, see-through glasses to engage with the component. And uh, another advancement in uh, MR, uh, these uh, virtual objects and physical objects, uh, they can interact with each, uh, each other in uh, this uh, virtual uh, world. So uh, let's uh, discuss about mixed reality and uh, what are the advancements, techn technological advancements uh, in uh, mixed reality. Uh, so we can uh, develop or we can engage with applications uh, and uh, we can experience uh, this uh, technology. Uh, so uh, let's go through this small video. So today uh, you guys are seeing a lot of videos and images uh, because uh, without uh, images and videos, uh, it is very hard to explain the technology. Uh, I think uh, this is, uh, will be much, uh, this, this, uh, by using videos and images, uh, it will be more fun, right? So uh, this device is known as the HoloLens by Microsoft. You guys can see this is a little bit similar to this virtual reality and Oculus. But uh, the difference is uh, this device is more like a uh, spectacle, right? Uh, or, uh, or it has a see-through glass. It's, trans uh, it's transparent. Right. Uh, to experience uh, mixed reality applications, we need something like HoloLens. Actually, this is the uh, most uh, preferred uh, device uh, to experience uh, mixed reality or to develop mixed reality. Uh, there are other uh, head-mounted devices like uh, Google's uh, Glass and uh, Apple is developing their own uh, mixed reality headset. Uh, but uh, this is uh, currently available in the market uh, for developers uh, and uh, there are a lot of 
advancements in uh, this device uh, rather than VR headsets. Right, so uh, we discussed about uh, these uh, three XR uh, technologies and uh, we discussed about the industries that we can apply these technologies. And uh, we discussed about different hardware devices and uh, the difference between those hardware devices. So now we are going to discuss about uh, the development technologies, uh, the softwares and the skills that we need to develop these XR applications. So uh, this is uh, one of uh, the most uh, famous uh, software development platform, uh, a game engine known as the Unity Game Engine. Uh, we can use the uh, Unity Game Engine to create XR applications. Uh, we need uh, to learn uh, about uh, C Sharp or programming language uh, for develop these uh, type of applications and also uh, there are uh, plugins available uh, for non-programmers. If you don't know programming, uh, then uh, there are plugins available. Uh, we can uh, create applications uh, without using programming knowledge, uh, uh, with uh, using uh, drag and drop mechanisms. Uh, there are plugins available inside the Unity game engine. Uh, again, uh, to uh, run and execute uh, XR applications uh, by using Unity Game Engine, uh, you need a computer with a little bit uh, more processing power. Uh, you no need to uh, buy a very high-end computer, but uh, it is better if you have a computer with a good processing power and a GPU. Uh, so uh, then uh, it will save you more time. So this is uh, one of the most uh, famous platform for XR development. And uh, another uh, software platform, another engine, uh, Unreal Engine, uh, uh, you need to have, it is better if you have some C++ uh, programming knowledge uh, to create XR applications with uh, Unreal Engine, or else uh, there's another mechanism known as the blueprint. Uh, you can uh, create uh, applications uh, without uh, doing the actual coding thing by using Blueprint. So uh, again, uh, to run this Unreal Engine, uh, you need a computer with better performance. Uh, otherwise, uh, you cannot install uh, or uh, you cannot uh, run Unreal Engine. Uh, again, you no need to buy very high-end computers, uh, but uh, it is better if you have some processing power inside your computer to run Unreal Engine. And uh, these two applications, they are free. Uh, you can download this application for free. Uh, this is, uh, these platforms are free for students and uh, uh, free for uh, indie developers and teachers. So uh, these platforms are free. Uh, in addition to the, those two softwares, we need a few special software development kits or else uh, known as plugins uh, to develop VR and AR and MR applications because uh, we need to access uh, or we need to get, uh, if you are developing a VR application for STC Vive, then you need to uh, access uh, these uh, sensors to get the projections of the head mounted display or else uh, to get the positions of the joysticks uh, and also you need to get the uh, user interactions uh, uh, to your application. So uh, to do that, uh, you need a Steam VR uh, plugin. Uh, so uh, you can develop application uh, applications for HTC Vive. And uh, if you are using Oculus Quest uh, and uh, if you need to get the image, uh, sorry, if you need to get the hand tracking enabled in your application, uh, then again, Oculus SDK, you need to import Oculus SDK for your development platform. Uh, and uh, if you are developing any uh, VR application for the uh, Google Cardboard one, then the Google Cardboard VR plugin, uh, you need to install it with your development platform. And uh, there are three uh, common uh, AR plugins uh, or SDKs available for augmented reality as well. Uh, the first one, uh, Vuforia, uh, cross-platform plugin. That means uh, you can create Apple and Android uh, 
AR applications uh, by using this Vuforia plugin. And uh, it has markerless and mark, mark based technologies uh, inside uh, that plugin. And uh, the AR foundation. Uh, previously, this AR foundation uh, was uh, two components AR core uh, for Google devices, for Android devices, and AR kit for Apple devices. But nowadays, uh, it's a uh, one common plugin known as AR Foundation. So uh, if you are going to develop AR application for uh, iOS devices and uh, Android devices, then again, you can use AR Foundation. Uh, it has uh, marker-based and markerless technologies, uh, but there are a few limitations. And uh, the Wikitude uh, also uh, Cross platform plugin, but it's, it is not available for free. Uh, but uh, you can uh, try uh, Vuforia and AR Foundation for free. Uh, Wikitude, uh, it's not a free plugin, and uh, it has that scene recognition component as well. And uh, if you are going to develop any uh, mixed reality application uh, for HoloLens, uh, then uh, you need to uh, install MRTK, the Mixed Reality Toolkit from Microsoft uh, with your development engine, uh, Unity or Unreal. Then uh, you can develop uh, Mixed Reality applications for your selected hardware device. Right, okay. So uh, the, the main purpose of uh, this session is to bring your new creative idea to the reality. So uh, before uh, going... Uh, before talk, uh, talk about this uh, section, uh, I would like to take uh, your questions. So uh, now uh, we can uh, discuss the questions. Uh, if you have any issue, uh, you can use the chatting channel. Yes, sir. Uh, Hello. So. Yes, Manula. Uh, sir, thank you very much, sir. That was a really interesting and informative session. Uh, so even myself, have uh, I didn't have any idea about AR, VR, and MR before this session. And all the videos you shared were very helpful in understanding these new technologies. Uh, so we have, and uh, now we will move to the Q&A session. Yes. Uh, so we have received some questions from the participants. Uh, and they have asked, uh, uh, please explain the difference between hologram and virtual reality. Yes, uh, hologram. Uh, hologram means uh, uh, it's something uh, we can see uh, with our real world, right? Uh, for an example, uh, If you are using any uh, holographic uh, projector, then uh, you can create certain type of visual effects, 3D models in the real world. But uh, if you are using VR, virtual reality, a VR headset, uh, that means uh, you cannot uh, see the real world. You can uh, see only the virtual world. So uh, that's the difference uh, between VR and hologram. Yes, I hope that person got the answer. Uh... So there's another question. Uh, how can this AR, VR, MR be applied in civil engineering side? Yes, uh, like in uh, those two videos, uh, we can uh, create uh, AR uh, and uh, VR applications. Uh, for an example, VR applications for architectural visualizations. Uh, we can uh, develop. Uh, nowadays, uh, people using uh, 3D platforms uh, like uh, AutoCAD. Uh, but uh, we can use VR platforms uh, and we can develop these uh, construction sites in real world. And also we can simulate those things. Uh, for an example, uh, if, uh, if you are developing any uh, uh, expressway or a bridge, uh, so then uh, we can simulate the procedure, uh, the flood uh, or the traffic. Uh, so uh, we can use uh, VR and AR uh, to to develop uh, such applications for civil engineering. 
Yes, so thank you. Uh, so there's another question. Uh, how to get experience on AR using Android mobile devices? Yes, uh, if you are using uh, Android, then uh, you can go with AR Core and Unity game engine. Uh, I mean, uh, the development side. Uh, but uh, again, uh, you can use Vuforia with Unity engine as well. Uh, so uh, you no need uh, any ex uh, extra hardware in, uh, or a sensor in your mobile phone, uh, only the camera and the display. Yes, so some people are asking us, uh, so, uh, when can we see these AR, VR, MR technologies in Sri Lanka? I mean, are they already available or are these technologies used in Sri Lanka currently? Or if not, when will be they available? Yes, uh, currently, uh, uh, these technologies are using uh, in uh, certain areas. Uh, most of the times uh, in education, uh, we are using AR and also advertising uh, currently Sri Lanka. You, uh, is using AR, uh, but uh, our uh, hope is to populate uh, or uh, to get uh, these devices because uh, in the market, uh, HTC Vive or the Oculus Quest, uh, Quest, these devices are not available in the market. So uh, there's, uh, there's a little bit uh, uh, kind of a lag uh, or a negative uh, impact uh, because of uh, that reason. Uh, but uh, people are using AR applications. Uh, people uh, actually, uh, if you uh, if you go to uh, certain places like Excel World or uh, KCC, then uh, you can experience VR movies. Uh, there are such platforms in Sri Lanka. Yes, uh, someone has asked about uh, using these softwares in, uh, like, you know, in the tourism industry to develop the tourism industry in Sri Lanka. How can we use these softwares? Yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to answer to that question because uh, our next session is uh, based on that question. So, uh, actually, thank you for that question, uh, right, Manula? Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, someone has asked, uh, can we even create real life persons, models in front of us using these technologies? Uh, actually, uh, to create uh, real life uh, models and uh, real life persons, uh, we need other applications uh, like uh, 3D modeling applications like 3D Max or Cinema 3D or Blender. Uh, most of the times uh, by using Unity and Unreal, uh, we cannot uh, do the 3D modeling thing. Uh, by using uh, those platforms, uh, we can develop applications, but uh, we need to create those 3D models by using other software, such as uh, 3D Max or Cinema 4D or Maya or Blender. Yes, someone has asked, uh, has AR, VR and MR been used in the agricultural sector in, uh, in the upcoming future? Uh, he thinks that it's very important to develop technologies to use agriculture sector to achieve the sustainable development. And if it has not been used, uh, do you have any ideas about how to incorporate those technologies with agriculture? Yes, uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, there's no uh, such application for agriculture, AR or VR. Uh, we know, uh, farmers, uh, they have very limited access to uh, hardware devices, right? Uh, actually, they, some, some of them don't have mobile phone. So uh, how can we develop uh, VR applications uh, for them? So they, there are a few limitations uh, in uh, that section, but we can uh, create agriculture uh, or uh, agriculture-based uh, platforms by using AR and VR. Uh, for an example, uh, we can think uh, something like this. Uh, we can uh, develop uh, farmer uh, training application. For an example, by using VR, we can simulate different type of weather conditions. Uh, we can simulate uh, flood, we can simulate rainy season, we can simulate uh, the uh, uh, the drought season, right? So uh, in uh, such uh, kind of uh, things, uh, we can uh, develop applications uh, to train or uh, to give a better uh, understanding for farmers as well as the officers uh, who are responsible in that area. Right, okay, Manuel. Uh, yes, sir. so that's 
all the questions we have. Uh, right, so then, so uh, uh, we go to our final section. Yes, sir, we can. Right, okay. So uh, the main purpose of uh, this event uh, to bring your creative idea to the reality. Uh, now, you guys need to think uh, uh, like developers or uh, think in a very creative way. And uh, you need to generate a new idea for a new XR platform to support tourism industry in Sri Lanka. And uh, you can combine it uh, with your relevant field and uh, profession. For an example, uh, if you are uh, if you are doing uh, dancing, then uh, you can uh, uh, propose an idea uh, to promote a Sri Lankan traditional dancing uh, VR platform uh, and uh, other people like uh, tourists or uh, the people in other countries, uh, they can uh, try uh, the dancing uh, and uh, they can uh, experience uh, the stuff uh, like uh, the uh, candy uh, uh, and uh, such cultural event. And uh, if you are an engineer, then uh, you can propose uh, some app idea uh, like uh, uh, promoting uh, very uh, attractive engineering constructions in Sri Lanka. So uh, then we can support the tourism. So uh, this is the final uh, aim or the uh, final purpose of uh, this uh, event. So uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, Shasha, Manuela and uh, the team uh, for inviting me uh, for this uh, session. And uh, I think uh, this uh, session will be a, a huge impact uh, to bring uh, this uh, technology to Sri Lanka or uh, to populate this uh, technology among undergraduates and other uh, citizens uh, around the uh, world and in Sri Lanka. So uh, it's up to you, Manuela. Uh, so uh, you can uh, describe about the competition. Yes, sir. so uh, I hope by now you will have clarified your doubts you had during the session, uh, after the Q&A session. And we have mentioned you about the competition being held after this session. So to provide you with more details about the competition, uh, I would like to invite the chairman of the project, Ilusio, Mr. Sarendu Shehan. Uh, over to you, Sarendu. Oh, hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, so uh, I hope everyone uh, staying safe. Uh, so uh, these are the rules of our competition, uh, more like how to do the competition, not uh, really the rules. Uh, they are more like regulation and, uh, regulations and how to do the competition. Uh, you have to design a poster on a canvas to inform the relevant data needed clearly. Uh, mind the size of the canvas. Uh, uh, if, if it becomes more bigger, then you uh, cannot really focus uh, that into a photo. So uh, you have to provide a clear poster on the uh, design topic. Uh, and you have to adhere to the topic uh, the uh, our facilitator, facilitator has given. Uh, the topic is how we can uh, apply the technology of XR uh, into the uh, tourism industry. Uh, and you have to use the workspace efficiently. Uh, you have to provide a clear idea on uh, uh, what you are proposing uh, using the space you are given. Uh, if any word, sentence, or phrase used in the illustration uh, is itself, uh, keep it to a level that it won't disturb the illustration. Uh, you can use any illustration medium. Uh, it can be digital. It can be hand-drawn, anything. Uh, you have to pitch your idea using uh, 100 plus or minus 50 words uh, in a separate sheet. Uh, that means if you uh, illustrate the idea, uh, you have to describe it uh, using words. Uh, wh what is this idea uh, and how, how it's going to help you in the industry? Uh, and use your, when pitching, use your words very creatively. Uh, 
so we are going to mark uh, mark this illustrations you submit uh, uh, in four categories uh, out of 100 marks uh, 30 will go to application uh, that means uh, how 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 it would uh, connect with the xr uh, platform and the applicability of the uh, your illustration uh, would uh, get 20 marks and the create it will uh, get 50 marks each uh, so that's all for the marking criteria and uh, rules uh, thank you manula yes thank you ali uh, so uh there were some more questions we received uh, i think sir you can answer them there are like two more questions if it's yes. possible uh so someone has asked uh, uh so like this is a new technology to sri lanka so they are asking like uh, what kind of job opportunities would be there if someone learn this kind of new technology in sri lanka yes uh, these are the uh, job opportunities uh, 3d developers uh, we need 3d developers uh, we need uh, 2d developers and uh, ui engineers uh, ui ux engineers programmers uh, we need uh, render engineers, uh, programmers specialized in uh, Unity, Unreal, and image processing, and uh, these type of technologies, and also uh, programmers uh, with uh, visual effects and CGI. So uh, these are the job opportunities uh, we require for this field. Yes, thank you, sir. So many of them have asked about the softwares and those kind of tools which we are using. I think, uh, sir, you already mentioned them. Uh, are there any more to add? Uh, like, no, actually, uh, these two, uh, Unity and the Unreal, uh, these two are the best uh, platforms that uh, we can uh, start, develop uh, AR and uh, VR applications. So, uh, and programming languages, uh, C Sharp and uh, C++. And if you don't know any programming language, uh, there are solutions uh, such as uh, Blueprint. Uh, so, no need to worry. Oh, yes. uh, and someone has asked, like, uh, in the medical industry, what kind of applications they have, uh, they have asked, like, uh, to identify cancer cells and, like, to health issues like eye problems. Are there any applications using these technologies? Uh, well, at the moment, uh, there, are, there are no such applications for special uh, disease or special uh, domain in the health industry. Uh, there are common applications, uh, but uh, you need to buy these applications or else uh, you need to custom develop these applications for Sri Lanka. Yes, so there's one final question. Uh, as a beginner to game development, uh, what platform should we learn at first, like starting from Unity or Unreal Engine? Uh, what path should we follow to be a game developer with these new technologies? Yes, uh, starting point. Uh, it is better if you can start with. Uh, if you don't know programming, uh, then uh, you can start with something like Scratch. Uh, and uh, if you know programming or if you are familiar with programming, then you can move to Unity. And uh, then, uh, if you need to create the three D models and the stuff, then you can start with Blender. Yes, and sir, many has asked that uh, are there any like any specific degrees like to follow in higher education to uh, you know excel in these AR VR MR technologies for uh, the higher studies? Yes, uh, there are several, uh, several type of uh, degrees available in Sri Lanka uh, in uh, uh, government and uh, private universities. Uh, you guys can uh, go through the UGC website and uh, get the details. There are special degree programs available. So uh, there's another question. Uh, they have asked, like, uh, since this is a new technology, uh, I mean, if someone follow these kind of technologies, uh, are there will there be will there be any kind of risk in following these degrees or whatever the uh, things yeah. related to this yeah. AR VR and MR? Yes, yes, yes there is a risk, uh, but we need to take risk uh, when we are uh, uh, living in our lives. We need to take risk, right? Yes, there, there is a risk because uh, uh, very limited number of uh, job opportunities available in Sri Lanka. But uh, in other countries, uh, there are 
many number of job opportunities, but in Sri Lanka, very limited. And uh, then uh, there is a risk. Yes, yes that's true. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so I think we are receiving more questions, uh, but uh, we'll be sending you a feedback from uh, in the chat box. Uh, so you can add the questions uh, in that because we are having a time limit. And next, uh, uh, so we'll uh, end the Q&A session. And I think uh, the doubts you have, most of them you have already been clarified by sir. Uh, and then uh, since our chairman explained you the competition details, I think you now also have an idea about the competition also. And uh, with the knowledge you have already acquired during today's session, and I think you will be able to do the mentioned illustrations. And I think we will be able to see many more innovative ideas from your submissions at the end. And I invite everyone to participate in it because winners will be awarded with valuable certificates and like mentioned, a free access to a highly reviewed course. And so I wish you a good luck with the competition. And uh, since we are arriving to the conclusion of today's event, I would like to invite the chairman of the project Illusio, Mr. Sayandu Shahan, to deliver the vote of thanks. Over to you, Sayandu. Oh, hello. hello. Thank you, Marla, uh, once again. Uh, so, uh, uh, as, that my, as my word of thanks, uh, Mr. Pulanka, engineer lecturer, Department of, Department of Information Technology, Faculty of Information Technology, uh, University of Moratua, Dr. Lasit Jasaketu, Ms. Varunika Hitpola, Advisors of IEEE Student Branch of SLTC, Mr. Timet Pereira, Chairman of IEEE Student Branch of SLTC, and other chapter chairman, uh, and other roundtable members. Um, also, I would like to uh, mention uh, my skilled committee members and uh, our most valuable invited guests and legit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, on behalf of uh, the IEEE industry application of SLTC, let me call it an absolute honor to address a gathering of this degree. Uh, and on my own uh, behalf, extend every uh, hearty word of thanks to all the uh, I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for Mr. Oplanka Firmasiri. Uh, for accepting our invitation and delivering a world-class webinar. We, well, we are truly grateful to you, sir. Uh, if it weren't for you, uh, this event wouldn't have been the same. I would uh, also like to hit the spotlight on uh, Mr. Sassi Senrat to uh, thank him for the all the hardship he went through to make uh, this event a success. Uh, also, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the manager of uh, IT at SLTC, Mr. Manu Satrasinghe, and I would also like to mention Mr. Naoh uh, you two were the go-to people for all the IT-related requirements. And also Mrs. Pavusala Amaravardhana, the registrar at SLTC, and, and all the administration staff for the efforts uh, made by you, which resulted in, a, in the succeeding of this workshop. Uh, last but not least, uh, I'm honestly, deep, honestly deeply thankful for all the participants from all around the world, uh, believe me, you are you are the pillars of this uh, success behind this work workshop. Uh, and all my fellow organizing committee members, uh, heads, uh, thank you all for exhibiting such a caliber experience. Uh, you were the hardworking pistons which helped produce a webinar of this quality and magnitude. Finally, we have prepared a small uh, digital token of uh, appreciation for a beloved resource person uh, in these times, uh, a digital token should be the way to go. Once again, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, this is our uh, yeah, token of appreciation for you. Uh, uh, finally, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, I want to state that we are more uh, grateful most grateful uh, to all members of this, of this meeting. And uh, we thank you all for being with us this evening. Uh, thank you. You are very welcome, uh, Sandaru, Shashya, Manula, and the IEEE team uh, for organizing uh, such uh, an event uh, during this uh, pandemic time. Uh, I know it is very hard to collaborate uh, in remotely. So uh, 
uh, thank you uh, for inviting me uh, and uh, i wish you all the best uh, so uh, you can uh, create more innovative and creative people uh, in the future so uh, good luck guys thank you very much sir thank you sir. thank you sir. so uh, we appreciate everyone for staying with us till the end of the session uh, thank you once again uh, so this is me mal rajabaksha signing off on behalf of ieee iaa student branch chapter of sldc good night and stay safe everyone